in attendance for today's first meeting of the Regional Economic Development Council out in Buffalo. He is Chautauqua County Executive Greg Edwards. Mr. Edwards, thanks very much for being here. It's good to see you. Great to see you, Liz. Thank you for having me on. So how did it go? I had some uh, cautious expectations, if you want to use that word, uh, on what we might be able to accomplish at this uh, first meeting of the, the first region council to come together. Uh, in this process, but I have to tell you, it exceeded all of my expectations. Huh, really? I was particularly pleased. Oh, it was great. I was, I was particularly pleased with the people who were assembled. It was a great group of uh, leaders from all spectrums of uh, this, uh, this economic region. It was supported by a really good group of people from uh, a variety of state agencies and local agencies, and uh, I thought the Lieutenant Governor did a good job. Uh, really introducing us to our, our challenge, introducing us to our opportunity, and then we set about the, the business of going right to work. Huh. So I, it exceeded my expectations. Okay, so when you say that you, you set about the business of going right to work, what does that mean? In other words, how do you structure this kind of thing? Your timeline is very, very short. You need to come up with a five-year plan uh, by the fall, and that is not a lot of time, November, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it is a significant uh, challenge in a very short uh, time frame, but I think the right people have been assembled around the, the, the room uh, for this Western New York region to make it happen. Most, if not all of us, have already been involved in numerous uh, long-term and short-term planning exercises. Most of us, if not all of us, have been involved in strategic planning, and so it's not a new concept or a new approach. The time frame is tight. But we have a lot of reasons, uh, one billion of them, yeah. to really focus on getting our job done and getting it uh, done right. Today was a good signal for me that people share that perspective and an excellent product will come out of our region. I, I am confident that we're going to see a significant portion of that funding just from watching uh, the leaders around the room really committed to, uh, to the work ahead of us. Do you have a feeling yet, and I know it's only been one meeting, but what kind of proposal might come out? In other words, what sort of economic development project would you propose? Well, I think that uh, I can boldly say that we'll have one of, if not the best proposals, because <laughs> no other region has our natural resources. No other region really has our diversity when it comes to the mixture of agriculture, tourism, uh, manufacturing and higher education and no other region has our benefit of our location. We're within 600 miles of over 50 percent of North America's population right here in Western New York. Hmm. So it gives us unique leverage in this process. I think that will be recognized when the final process goes forward and that is funding and putting dollars together to help real growth and real development happen. So again, we've got the right people in the room, we've got the right natural resources, uh, and I think we've got a process that we can be very successful in. Do you feel confident that this is not just window dressing, that this kind of a council is actually going to be able to make some real impact? Because, you know, there had been some complaints about some of the other task forces that have been put together, for example, like mandate relief, where people didn't meet all that much and that the second floor seemed to be driving the bus on this, the administration, the Cuomo administration. Do you feel like you're going to be able to really drive the bus and it won't be a top-down dictation from the governor's office? Well, we'll, we'll know. Uh, when we produce our uh, proposal for November, we will know shortly thereafter because the proof will be in what gets funded mm. and how is it funded. And there's some good questions about the process of selection, which the lieutenant governor did a good job of merely stating that that hasn't been completed yet, but it's going to be fair and open. We'll know when this uh, is resolved uh, because I firmly believe that the Western New York uh, Council is going to have some great programs that are going to be submitted in such a way that are going to be very compelling for a good share of those dollars. And uh, who ultimately makes the decision? That's not known, uh, but uh, I think the proof will be in uh, who gets funded and, how, and for how much. It, that's and, it. Uh, that's I look forward to. I'm sorry, County no. Exec. I don't mean to. I don't mean to cut you off. I just, just before I forget, I'm curious here. What kind of questions were brought up about and concerns that the Lieutenant Governor w was forced to address in terms of the selection process and, and things that are still up in the air? Oh, I thought that the, the press that we met with afterwards did a really good job of trying to get a handle on uh, what was the meeting, why did you have it where you did, mm. uh, why was it uh, closed to the media, mm -hmm. and somebody did ask that very good question you did is uh, basically, you know, how is this funding process going to take place? And again, I thought the lieutenant governor led a good meeting. I think he really focused people's attentions 
on what needed to happen, and he was very direct in his answer. He said that those issues are going to be are being resolved, and uh, have not yet been resolved as the exact process for selecting or who is going to select the projects and determine the dollar amounts. But I'm confident that uh, we're going to be able to hold our own and uh, secure a significant portion of that funding. That doesn't worry you at all, though, because when you're, you're actually competing for something and you don't know what the criteria is and who the judge is, in effect, that will make a decision, mm -hmm. and this is a competition, it really is. Some people are going to lose. Some people are going to win. The governor has been quite clear. Well, I was born and raised uh, with competition, and the <laughs> lieutenant governor uh, pointed out the Western New York is not, has never been afraid of competition, and we uh, do that uh, every day, whether it be professional sports or if with for our, uh, our economy and, uh, and, and opportunities like this. So uh, I can't control the process. All I can do is participate to my utmost and try and secure the best uh, opportunities and put our best foot forward by way of a project. I'm confident if we do that, the pressure then is going to be on the people who are making the selections to do it and do it the right way because it'll be clear because mm. everyone's going to know what these projects are and if it's doesn't if it's not rational everyone will know right and right I firmly believe that one of the things that gives Western New York an advantage is that for a very limited amount of dollars which that's really a billion dollars is a limited amount across the state the most bang for your buck the most return on investment can take place right here in Western New York for the reasons I stated and for the fact that we can do things uh, inexpensively and get a big return on our investment. So uh, a good share of that money is going to come our way. We're going to invest it the right way and uh, people are going to be proud of what we did. What about the idea of opening this up to the media? I mean, what was the Lieutenant Governor saying to you? It, would it be harmful in some way to let reporters and cameras in so we can all watch you deliberate and see you mix it up in there? Well, I, I think that he was clear there as well. He said that that will happen. But I also like the fact that he took responsibility. He said it was his decision, and he was clear about that hmm. and proud to state it, that he uh, uh, said it was his decision to have the first meeting be closed. I agree with him. Uh, what it allowed, elect speaking as an elected official, uh, it allowed you to be very candid and think very broadly uh, with regard to the issues that were presented and the, the real uh, kind of intellectual component there of bringing ideas, whatever they may be, to the table, expounding upon them and really putting them out there for people, other people to talk about. Mm -hmm. All too often in a, a meeting with the media, uh, I think people tend to be cautious because uh, there's context issues. You know, the media can only report a small component sure. of what's said or how it's delivered. In this particular case, it gave us a chance to introduce ourselves to one another, uh, ask very clear and pointed questions about the process, and really put ideas out there that could then be expounded upon or uh, not many were challenged because we're just talking about bringing as many ideas as we could to the table. I think it also allows people to be brief because they can just state their position and uh, go forward from there. Sometimes if you're worried about how things are going to be interpreted, you go on at length uh, to try and make sure you cover as much as you can, mm. and be as clear as you can. In this particular case, it was very focused, very brief. My congrats, uh, congratulations to Christina Orsi and others who put it together. And we, they kept us on schedule. We accomplished a great deal. And I, I look forward to our next meeting that's coming right up. Uh, do you, when is that next meeting, actually? Uh, I have to look at my schedule. I've got it right here, but August 16th. Oh, wow. So you okay. can see that we go August 16th, then September 6th, and, and we're very focused in our, our timeline because we want a good product. We want to deliver a good product. We're ready to compete yeah, for those dollars. This is fascinating to me because you are actually praising a guy that you ran against. Bob Duffy was your opponent in 2010, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, the nice thing about uh, these sorts of endeavors is uh, I put my best foot forward and uh, enjoyed my race and my run for lieutenant governor. I enjoyed the process, the people I met, the opportunity to put ideas out there. Uh, and, uh, and Lieutenant uh, Governor D uh, Duffy did the same. And so the issue here is how do you move New York State forward? It's not how do you move my political career forward or how you move <laughs> the lieutenant governor's political career forward. The issue is you know, how do we draw more bright, engaging, uh, motivated people to Western New York and other parts of New York? How do you draw more businesses and more entrepreneurs? How do you limit the role of government? How do you break down the barriers to development? That's really what, what I'm focused on, what, what I've always been focused on. Uh, in the course of a campaign, you've got to say why you're the best person for the job. And I tried to do that. And uh, certainly Lieutenant Governor Duffy did as well. And I understand that you have some news for us regarding your, your uh, political career. You are not going to seek the chairmanship of the state GOP. Is that correct? 
That's right. You know, I, I want to thank the people that uh, came to me and uh, uh, I'll say recruited, but asked me to consider the potential of being uh, the, uh, the chairman of the Republican Party for New York State. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I valued their opinion, and as a result, uh, I went out and talked to people about that. And uh, over the course of doing that around New York State, uh, the repeated refrain was uh, people expressed a belief they thought I was doing a good job as uh, county executive of Chautauqua County. They expressed that I had, uh, from their viewpoint, some significant skills and opportunities in the role of an elected official. I enjoy the job of being an elected official. I enjoy helping moving, move issues forward for the people I represent. At the end of the day, I had to agree with the folks that were giving me that opinion that the uh, best use of my talents was continuing as an elected official and seeking opportunities there should they ever present themselves. Interesting. And, uh, and that's the approach that I'm going to continue on. And uh, I just want to thank all the folks that, that spent time talking to me about the future of New York State talking about the future of the Republican Party and also giving me their very unvarnished, very candid opinions about what I might do to be most uh, beneficial on all those scores. Just before we run out of time, do you believe someone will challenge Ed Cox? You know, I really don't know uh, if someone else will or not, to be perfectly candid. I did my own analysis, my own research with people across the state, but those who I, I've come to know over the last few years and trust their opinions. And so that was really my focus, and I thank them for the time they spent with me. But I'm not aware of other people, who they are, what their interests might be. Interesting. Well, County Executive Edwards, I want to thank you very much for being with us. It is good to see you, as always, and we will catch up with you soon. Thank you, Liz. I look forward to another time in the future.